In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And greetings, everyone, and welcome to this first Sunday in Lent. As we enter into, we began this season last Wednesday with Ash Wednesday, and now we are entering fully into the meaning of what Lent is all about, a renewal and a new life and hope. And so as we begin our celebration this day, let us now pause for a moment. Let us ask the Lord to forgive our sins and to renew our hearts. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. 
Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and, be, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. <clears throat> God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing a covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. <clears throat> I will establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. A 
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now. It is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels and authorities and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, attempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angel ministered to him. And John had been arrested. John, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of the Lord. And won't you? And greetings, everyone. As I said on Ash Wednesday, for those who might have heard my homily, my sister called me up one day asking about what Lent was all about. And uh, she said, well, we've been going through Lent now for over a year and trying to figure out what all that means. But Lent itself is now the time that we bring all of this together and truly reflect on what's been going on and what our calling is. But Lent is also about another thing. It's about going into the attic of our lives and kind of emptying it out a little bit and finding out the treasures that are in there and what the wonderful things are that really make us who we are our story, our human life, what it means to be a member of a community, what it means to be alive in this age and time. And I think we'll find out as we empty that storage that there's a lot to see and there's a lot of hope in there if we just get rid of the clutter. And that was exactly what Jesus was doing. It was not uncommon in those days for those who were in a prayer, prayerful mood to go out into the desert. The desert was very close by, so it was easy to get to. And it wasn't like the desert that we have here in Arizona with beautiful plants and cacti. I mean, it really was rocks and rubble. Hardly any sand, just very dry, very hot, very plain, and in the evenings, very, very cold. It was the opposite of what the other side of Jerusalem looked like, which was rich and verdant. It was a place where you could go and 
all those things that were around you were now no longer there. You would sleep at night and look up and see the incredible stars that were available. And it was a time in Jesus' life where he was able to say, this is what's real. This is what's important because all the other things were extraneous. And it allowed him to build that message of hope that the time of fulfillment is here. That God is calling us to a better selves. That God is inviting us to live out the things that are most important to our lives. Love of each other, love of family, the values of things that are important. And guess what? The second car isn't what is important. The third or fourth computer isn't what is important. It's the relationship and the care we have for each other. And the nobility of that relationship that becomes so important. Because it is in those relationships that we see the face of God. That's what Jesus was reminding us of today in this reading. That we need to sometimes separate ourselves from all of the extra things in order that we can find what's really true and what's really loving and what's really liberating. During this pandemic, I did a number of things to try to do that in my own way because of all the responsibilities and stuff. Could be overwhelming at times as it has been in your home as well, trying to keep everyone safe, trying to follow what we needed to do to be able to get through. And I discovered that sometimes taking a picnic during the day, going into the hills and just calming down for a few hours or in an afternoon on my days off, even camping every once in a while, was a way that I could separate from those things that were cluttering and it allowed me to be able to focus on what was important. What was important for mission, what was important for community, what was important in my own life. What was God calling me to do? That's a journey that happens not just in Lent, it's a lifetime journey for us as Christians. We should always be asking, where is the Lord calling? But Lent allows us to focus on that a little bit deeper and to be able to really see what that resurrection of life is all about. Lent oftentimes is seen as such a time of deprivation, but in fact, it's a time of opportunity. It's a time for us in this pandemic to bring this whole year of Lenten practice into focus and to say, where is my God? Where is God calling me? Have, how, where is the kingdom that Jesus is proclaiming? And I think as we look through all of that and we pray over that and we search that out and we get rid of those extraneous things that we find in our attic, I think we're going to find out that the kingdom of he is here and now. And that our responsibility, as St. Paul, Paul reminds us over and over, is to build that kingdom, to be a partnership with God in the building of that kingdom. Lent allows us to find out what is our role, how we are called, what are the important things in life that allows us to be that co-creator with God? A sacred concept that is unique to our Catholic faith. Can you imagine? We believe that we are co-creators with God. But sometimes we get cluttered. And so Lent is a time to empty it out, to listen to the heart, and to ask ourselves, where is our God now? What is our role? What are we called to be? Let us continue our prayer. Saved by baptism and called to share God's Christ's victory over temptation, let us offer our intercessions to God. For the church, that these 40 days in the wilderness of Lent may increase the church's strength for proclaiming good news. We pray to the Lord. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. That God's covenant of peace with all people may inspire nations to prepare a heritage of peace for future generations. We pray to the Lord. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. that we who share this planet with every living creature may be good stewards of this fragile ark and reverence it as God's creation, we pray to the Lord. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. That as we commit ourselves to prepare for the Easter renewal of our baptismal covenant, we may be led by the Spirit into the Lenten wilderness and experience Christ's victory as our own. 
we pray to the Lord. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. That during the season of Lent, we may be guided to a new beginning of hope. We pray to the Lord. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our book of life, the children listed in our book of innocence, and, we, and for the people of this parish for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions on our wailing wall, those remembered on our wall of remembrance at the labyrinth, and for all of this, and for all the material needs of our parish community and its members, along with all those prayers that are deep in the recesses of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear these prayers as we begin our Lenten journey. During this Lenten season, open our hearts to your call and help us to embrace the Christian values of service, love, and compassion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord. <coughs> and let us pray. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal Mysteries, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal Feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your prayers as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you, ourself, you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offering, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. 
but before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, and to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things to himself through the blood to be shared on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more, giving thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your, son, Jesus, of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite unto yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all of the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us join together in that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now in your homes and among your friends, let us turn and let recognize the, the face of Christ in each other. Holy Spirit. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few brief announcements. Uh, starting this weekend, uh, we are having our Masses back in our church, which is a wonderful thing, so yay, we can celebrate that. We're still having to follow the protocols that we did previously when we were in the church, so you do need to make reservations and you'll be assigned a seated area for now. Hopefully as we get more vaccines and as we start to move toward the summer and other things, we're going to start to be able to uh, liberate ourselves more from that and become more normal. But it is a hopeful step. It's an important step as we move forward. So all the disciplines, all the things that we have followed, the three W's, all those things that we have heard until we're blue in the face, it's working. And the good things are beginning to happen and they're more hopeful now than ever before. So we need to keep up that practice. If you plan to attend our masses indoors, you need to again call for reservations, call Steve and Margaret, and they will be there, they'll be cheerfully help, willing to help you and get you set up. 
If you wind up having to cancel out from going to a mass, for instance, you're not feeling well or other things, please call them up so that they, are, so that they can free that space that you reserved for other people who would like to attend. Right now, we will continue the schedule that we were outside, the same time schedules, which is 3 p.m., 9 and 1, uh, until we see how the crowds are. If we wind up demanding more, then we're going to start then slowly expanding our mass offerings until we reach the full length that we need to do. So be patient with us as we return back. It, it's good news. As always, I want to thank you for your wonderful support and care. Uh, to keep this parish going, your donations and things are truly helping. And finally, for those of you who still do not feel comfortable coming to Mass yet because you have not received your vaccine yet, or because you're, or you're part of a vulnerable population, or you're just not sure or ready yet, you, the bishop has still dispensed us until this, uh, uh, until, this, until this crisis is over. So because of that, we will still be offering communion from 1030 to, to 1230 every Sunday, so watch us on, I'm glad you're watching us right now, but please be feel free to come by during those times and you can receive communion as well. So you're not missing out on anything until the day when you feel comfortable and you're ready to start joining us in the church itself. So we're, we're moving and we're progressing in the right direction and that should give us great cheer as we journey together through this most sacred time of Lent. The Lord be with you. And now pray for God's blessing. May the, may the bountiful blessings, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue by strengthening in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. with you.